What's that one, man? So, so that's your I keep forgetting his your like a remembrance badge. Uh, cap. Oh, right. Because we had Barnsley on. Yeah. He would say me exact same. He went, I got one of <laughs> So I spoke to the FA. Yeah, got him it's like young. Yeah, he's well happy. <laughs> <laughs> he got Harry Kane to present it. Yeah. 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 It's in Georgia, didn't it? Yeah. I saw the thing yeah. and I was like, yes. Yeah. Like, um, I'd, I'd worked we get so things hard done on, on the that. show. I was like, chased it off. <laughs> the power everything. of the show, eh? Seaman Says with David Seaman. Brought to you by Betway. Hello and welcome back to Seaman Says. Brought to you by Betway with our special guest this week, Mike Feeling. We'll talk about Ruben Amarim's first game in charge of Man United later. But we've got to start at the Emirates. And it's <laughs> Always. Arsenal against Forest. And all I can think about is Liverpool against Forest. <laughs> when, uh, that was a big shock. Yeah. You know, right. and are they capable of doing that again? Yeah. They're look, better. Look at where they are on the table. Of course they are. I think they are capable. You know, they've, they've got a bit of a, a good scene going, mm. flying through the football yeah. club at the moment, haven't they? No more controversy, and it's all about the game and playing. So I think there's a lot of confidence in that in that dressing room. I think they'll look forward to that. Striker yeah. in form as well in Chris Wood. We keep p- picking him on our no, we do. Uh, four to score, don't exactly. we? Exactly. Yeah, and that's you know the goals he's getting. They're all sorts of different goals. It, it reminds me quite a lot of Harry Kane. You know, yeah. The, the the finishes he's got because he's got everything there. You know, he's got the headers. He's got you know side foots, pings, everything. I remember him at Burnley because I'm. But, you know, it's Burnley and, and that's the team I've supported all my life, really, Burnley. But I remember him when he played there and he could always weigh in with a, mm. with a, he could get the tap in, he could get the header, but he could also get one from outside the box now and again. Yeah. So he, he showed signs of being a progressive player and he certainly, wherever he's been, he's actually, yeah. he's actually. Yeah, well, he was at Leeds, my club, you know, yeah. doing really well there. Then he, then he left to go to, was it Burnley? Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah. and then to Newcastle. And then to and Newcastle. Then- and, then, and I think he's then produced then. wherever he's been and mm. he's, he is in form now. You know, he's definitely yeah. proving to be one of those centre forward. Well, he's a centre forward, isn't he? I mean, we're not talking about centre forward. He's a number nine. <laughs> he's a nine. <laughs> number nine. But he gets his majority of goals through being in the right place. Mm. Yeah. He, he can sniff out spaces. He can get on mm. the end of headers. He's, he's terrific in the air. Yeah. And he's, uh, he's definitely a threat. Yeah. Good movement as well. Um, your defence, though, more than capable of dealing with that. Should Although you're be. not you're not being great on the clean sheets this season. No, no, but it's you know we're we're in a, a situation at the moment where we're not guaranteed a win. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's not like oh yeah, well it will win that quite comfortably. That's not happening at the moment. <laughs> no, you know, and it's it's changed a little bit. But you know whether Declan will be fit, we'll have to wait and see. Mm-hmm. Whether the Kyle will be fit, you know that's. They're two big players for us. Well, all teams want the best players on the football field, don't they? Mm. Yeah. You know, and that's that's massively important, you know, to get that consistency, that rhythm. Mm. But also have that fear factor as well like, mm. with the opponent, isn't it? And when they're not there, there is that little, you know, possibility that they're not just firing on all cylinders. Yeah. So it's, uh, I won't say it's a banana skin for Arsenal. I mean, it should be. It's a, t- it's it's a, a test. test. But it's definitely a test of the, the mentality. Yeah. Mm. For sure, as to yeah. as to how they're going to uh, get a result in that game yeah. it, it, against a team that's in form. I tell you yeah. what, though, you've got Martin Odegaard back, yeah, and he'll, he'll, he showed glimpses in the Chelsea game, um, and he's had an extra two weeks because he nice didn't go rest. on international <laughs> like duty. Exactly. <laughs> so actually, that could be exactly what he needs. Yeah. Um, you know, and we noticed the, the difference of the balls into the box, the delivery that, that yeah. he can give. You know, there are other players in the team that can do that, but he does no, but it best. He's, he's, he can see these little passes that others others yeah. don't. You know, even his assist. Oh, he can make goal. the difference. Yeah. He definitely makes yeah. a difference to the rhythm of a game yeah. and certainly a result in the game. Mm. Isn't he? And he has been missed. There's yeah. no doubt about that. You know, he has been dominant in that position. And, and he's, he's showed a lot of leadership qualities in that team as well. Yeah. And the reliability mm. for the team as well. Because when he's there... He does make them tick, doesn't he? Mm. And it's yeah. shown that when he hasn't been there, there's yeah. been little question marks. Well, he, he showed it at the weekend, well, before the internationals, where, you know, like he was like, he was tri- triggering all the presses. You know, you could yeah. actually see him, you know, like telling people to hold back and then, all, you know, then telling people to, yeah. to, uh, to press on. Yeah. And you miss yeah. that. Yeah. You, you miss that quality on, yeah. on a football field. It doesn't matter. All teams need a leader or leaders, let's say yeah. the more the better, but mm. certainly a leader that can mm. that can be the the main guy when it when it's needed. You don't don't always have to be in there being the main man, but when it's required, mm. you have to step up. Yeah. 
And cool, he's a guy who can step up. Cool, calm head as yeah. well, which your team needs. It'll be good for the fans as well, because I think they'll really appreciate that introduction mm. again, yeah. won't they? Because yeah. they'll have missed him for sure. Yeah, and if, if Declan's fit and Bikail's fit, then we are more or less at full strength. You're at home as well. And at home, mm. yeah. You yeah. Know, so we should. So it's a 4-0 win then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just set him up. Ross, you absolutely destroy him. <laughs> it's normally always like, not even for it's always like six points. Anyway. <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to it. But also, because you're at the Emirates, I think that gives you a huge advantage. But because Manchester City lost points mm-hmm. the weekend before at the international break, Everybody now chasing Liverpool, which you didn't think was going to be the case at the start of the season. In a way, does it almost give you a little bit of an advantage that you're chasing, that you and Manchester City are are chasing and it's Liverpool looking over their shoulder this early? I'm 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 trying to spin it positively for you. No, but it is. It's not as, there's not as much pressure, you know, when you're chasing. When you're being chased, there's a bit of pressure. You know, and people are they've already talking about, you know, what's the the, the biggest lead that a team's had that's you know that have been clawed back. Right, yeah. We we you know mm. we done Man United when they were yeah. eleven in front that's of right. us. Yeah. You know, so it's still it's still up there. Um, you know, so what is it? Eight, eight or nine points now? I, I can't think remember. It's nine. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, it, and I think the difference now well. is though, there's a lot more teams can take points yeah, of teams. Exactly. You know, it's not just that small group anymore, which is quite a blessing, really, in a yeah. way. Yeah. That they're all fighting for points. Everybody fights for points now, and it's difficult to come by. So mm. you know, it's a great thing to get three points at the end of the day because it's hard. It really is hard mm. to get three points on a regular, regular basis. Whereas it was dominant with City, United in the time, Arsenal in the time. You know, Liverpool now are in there. Mm. But there's others underneath that now who are taking yes. points of everybody. And Notts Forest are one of those teams. They yeah. definitely can take points. You said Notts Forest. You did. I <laughs> don't. I'll call them Notts Forest. No, we can't, can we? No. Not Nottingham Forest. Here. I went to university in Nottingham. It is absolute sacrilege to call them Notts Forest. Nottingham Forest, not Nottinghamshire Forest. It's Notts County. Yes, but it's Nottinghamshire County. I'll take that one. So that's I'll fine. take that one. It's Nottingham. <laughs> <laughs> they play Just at the City Forest, Ground, the Nottingham City. <laughs> Unbelievable. Right. Um, well, You've been look, told. Yeah, you have been told. I win. That's a free meal in Nottingham. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm a Luton fan. Maybe not. <laughs> they don't like us much. <laughs> um, Ipswich, Ruben Amarim. I'm fascinated to see how this is going to go. Yeah. And yeah. I, like, it depends how you look at it, right? I'm very much a glass half full person. Sorry, mm-hmm. Ipswich fans, but you would look at this game as your first in charge and lick your lips a little bit. However, yeah. like you just said, anybody can beat anybody. We know what Ipswich are capable of. They got the first win of the season the other week. Yeah. And that is a banana skin because everybody expects them, regardless of a new manager or not, to go and win it. Well, every. <sighs> After an international break as well, everybody's fingers crossed for Friday to come around and everybody's fit and ready to be selected. <laughs> you know, that, that's that's been everybody's problem over the years, isn't it, from a manager's yeah. point of view. But obviously it's reintroducing himself, or not reintroducing himself to the squad, the group of players. Then he's got to pick his first team, which is going to be interesting as to how he sees that, what's his first team going to be. <clears throat> but also taking his team to Ipswich which is relatively an unknown journey for some of those players. Mm. Yeah. And Ipswich, having won previously and got that sort of got that first win in the big league, and Kieran's done magnificent and his staff's mm. done fantastic, mm. really, to, to get them into that position, they'll be looking forward to this. Ipswich will definitely be looking, the crowd will be looking forward to it, the management, the staff, because they're ex Man U. Yeah, all yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and, then, and then there's going to be sort of Man U coming to town. Premier League, mm-hmm. that's dreams for it, Twitch, because they've been out of it for so long. Yeah. I just think it could be a real, real tricky one, this one. You- one thing will happen, the players will react to the new manager. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That always happens. Yeah. We've all been in those situations, yeah, haven't we, where, yeah. where suddenly you find that extra burst of energy and suddenly you find a little bit more running power in you because you want to please the new guy. Yeah. Yeah. The interesting bit is, how do they perform? How do they really perform as a team? Are they really up yeah. for it? Or are they still sort of waiting to see what's going to happen? Do you think really uh, Rude's added to the pressure? What, with with what he's done there? Yeah. 
Uh, I think Rude was in sort of a, a great situation in a way that he couldn't he couldn't yeah. fail, you know. Mm-hmm. And he's, he, to be honest, he took on the mantle really, really well. It reminded me a lot of Michael Carrick when Michael Carrick stepped up, mm-hmm. right, you know. And I, I I stayed to to help Michael through that four or five games, and he he went undefeated on that spell. And yeah, there's a connection because yeah. you're all in it together all of a sudden. You know, there's no clear sort of manager as such, but you're all in it together, and you're an ex-player with a group of players, ex-Man United. And you get a response, mm. and 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 certainly Rude got that response, and he, he did very very well. And I think it's put him in in the picture really for a, for a future job in um, management because that's say, that's what he wants. You, yeah. you, you mentioned Michael Carrick there, and obviously you know the the faith that he's shown with with, with Middlesbrough, he's gotten close to yep. uh, the playoffs and promotion a couple of times as well. Really stabilised the the club. They're always in and in and around um, the yeah. mix. Um, won't mention the scoreline they beat us by the other week. <laughs> um, but he's doing a brilliant job and I think he's a superb manager, Michael. But could Rude follow that same, you know, rather yeah, than no reason why a, a good champion? They're two player. different people. Yes. They're completely two yeah. different people. Yeah. You, you know, two different mentalities. But I, I think deep down they've got a winning mentality. Yeah. But mentality as to how they see the game, what they want to do. Michael's cool, calm, and collected. Always, mm. always has been as a player. I can't read Definitely him. was as a coach. And I think he's got his feet under the table to a degree at Middlesbrough, a good club to work for. Mm-hmm. They stick with you, you know what I mean? I right. think Michael's found that probably a blessing in yeah. a way that he can get on with a job a little bit undercover, you know, yeah. but ticking away nicely. And the same again, Kieran, another one, you know, he took on the job in, in the lower division. He mm-hmm. dropped down in order to bring them up sort of thing, and he did that well. So there's a lot of there's a lot of good promise there in both of those coaches. Rude's definitely in that. I mean, Rude, Rude nearly enough got a job, I think, at my old club at Burnley okay. before the, the Man United opportunity right. came along. Mm. There was a lot of talk of him going Instead in there. Instead of Scott Parker? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then, obviously, Rude, Rude, for one reason or another, I don't know, didn't fancy it or, or stayed away from it. Well, and what then an he ended up at, to, at Man United. I mean, the opportunity you know? at Man United, yeah. especially you when you that, know yeah. that Eric Ten Hag's position isn't necessarily that stable. Well, I, I don't you know. know, you know, the ins and outs of that, whether that was true or not, but he got invited to be the assistant. Yeah. Well, yeah. the assistant... Of the assistant to the manager, there's quite a few there, wasn't oh, there? Wow. Good to or not. Quite, yeah, right. <laughs> but but you've got to go in and do the job, yeah. You know? yeah. And, and I think he took that on, you know, really, really well. Obviously, he had the understanding of, of Manchester United mm. being a player there, yeah. But you can't ask for any more than what he did. Well, you know, but, he's what, picked the team, he's got the players going, he's managed to get results, and you know, he can he's come away from that now thinking. Yeah, I can do this. I can do yeah, this at the top yeah. level. I can do this at a, a club in the Premier League. The media obviously sit there and go, well, Ruben Amarim would be stupid to get rid of Ruud van Nistelrooy because, you know, of how he knows the club, etc." Mm-hmm. And then the other side of it is Ruben Amarim would be stupid to keep Ruud van Nistelrooy <laughs> yeah, because yeah. of what he's done. It is interim. Do you think it's the right move? Was it his choice? Would, would Ruud have even wanted to be number two? To, to I think Ruud made it pretty clear that he's, he wants to be a number one. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I'm, I'm not saying that you can't be a number two with a desire to be a number one. There's nothing, nothing wrong with that. But I think when the new manager came in, he's got to definitely look at the group of play- people he's worked with mm. at Sporting and mm. he's brought those people with him. That, that happens, with him or something, doesn't it? Yeah. Normally, sometimes you bring one or maybe two, but five is yeah. a pretty strong statement, isn't yeah, it? It's it to is. say, I'm happy with this group of people to work with. I need to bring all that with me. And it gives him a sense of safety, in a way, around the people he knows. And that, there's nothing new in the game about that, whether yeah. you know your assistant stays or moves on when the manager gets the sack. It, it happens. It's life. What's, game. what's the first thing he needs to do? Win. Yeah. Perform. Yeah. Probably the second Just best get, thing. Get him playing with put, confidence. Needs to put up Does he need to win in. the players over? Yeah. Has he got, I, uh, I'd say so. They always, you always have to. It's like even when a new signing comes to your club, you know, you have to prove it. The players will assess him on the training. On oh, the training definitely, pitch. yeah. Yeah, I think your first your first week, 10 days are, are mm. massively important because yeah. it's what you say, what you do, mm. um, you know, what kind of... I mean, I think we've already seen a little bit of him where he's, he's entered into the, the training complex and he's been giving hugs to people straight yeah. away. Mm. You know, now that's a sign of probably him, his personality. Yeah. You know, can he keep giving hugs when things aren't going so well? We'll I'm, I'm a hugger. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. But, but I think, I think he's, he's there for a reason because he's yeah. good enough to be there mm. for a start. Yeah. The interesting thing is how quickly he can adapt to the Premier League because I think when yeah. you look at it, Ten Hag's credentials, Eric Ten Hag's credentials and Ruben's credentials are pretty much the same as they've been yeah. reported in mm-hmm. the media. Mm. Yeah. And yet 
it's a million miles away from the actual job at hand. And Man United, Man United is a monster. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, a monster yeah. in the Premier League, yeah. definitely. I, I'm, I'm going to ask you shortly what it's like being, <laughs> in, right. that, it, being in that it's environment. Great. But, but in, in terms of the game, um, what do you want to see from Manchester United under Rupert Amarim going to Portman Road? What, what, what's the first thing you're looking for with your coaches head on from, from those players? Well, you want an attitude. You definitely want to see a, a, a real tight attitude to the game and a respectful mm. attitude at that, you know, because you can't go there thinking, you know, we're better because they're not mm. around right? this present moment no. in time. They're not. They're probably yeah. on a par, as daft as that sounds. But but the, the interesting bit will be how reactive they are to the new guy's information and yeah. and can they be disciplined enough to get a result? Because there's been many times in Man United's playing time, and I've seen one or two of the games, not many, that they get into certain situations and then fall away. Mm. You know, and he'll probably be looking for that strength of character and personality to to wear that shirt mm. right the way through the game and get the result. But, but I've always stressed this performance is important in Man United. You have to perform mm. because that's expected of you. Yeah. You've got the ability, you've got to perform, yeah. you know, and score goals. For me, they have to perform as a team. Correct. Rather than trying to play for themselves. Mm-hmm. You know, we've spoken about that before, haven't yep. we? You know, like we've come in and we've said like, but there's too many people there playing for themselves. Yeah, well, that's a possibility. I mean, there's, there's, there's all whys and wherefores, isn't there, as yeah. to why you do. But a lot, sometimes a lot of it is in a, a mental uh, place for a football player is sometimes you look after yourself because yeah. it's turbulent. Mm. You know, exactly. look after number one. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's, that's just a fact of life. The point is you've got to come together. It's, if you want to be winners, you want to be a team that's successful, yeah. it is a team. Mm. It's a squad, not just a team, that's a squad. Yeah. But then also it's the team behind the team, which is vitally important yeah. as well, that they all have to be pulling in the right direction. Mm. And if they get that, then stick with it. Yeah. Go for it. At, at least he's got the fans on side already, um, not just because he's not Eric Ten Hag. <laughs> 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 but also because a sporting Lisbon manager, he beat Manchester City in the Champions League. So he's already, you know, made Well, that's not a bad result ground. to have exactly. got yeah. straight away, is it? <laughs> from exactly. a supporter's point of view. And but he'll be looking at that from a completely different angle now, yeah, won't he, as to how competitive he can make his team mm. going forward. Yeah, mm. Man City have got some... Um, coverage to, to claw back as well same as Arsenal when they've got a big yeah. game in Spurs who are, are having an absolute, an absolute shocker much to your delight <laughs> Spurs the moment. Spurs they're Spursy they're up and down yeah, yeah. but they could go to Man City and get a result and yeah. they've done it before they've done it quite a few times Yeah, they're without Benton Core for right. seven matches oh, yeah, yeah that's, that's right yeah. Yeah. just got that ban yeah. Uh, yeah. On, on Monday I mean I've, I've seen Spurs a couple of times because I know Nick Montgomery who's on the coaching staff there I worked with him in Australia and and, the, and when he went up to Hibs I, I watched him a little bit there and he's he's a forward thinking coach um, I don't know exactly what the role is right now but at Tottenham when I speak to him and you watch Tottenham I think Ange has got a lot of positivity in him, yeah. you know, he, he's very, very positive on that forward aspect of the mm. game and what have you. He's just got to get it all together yeah. to make it consistently good. And he's not that far away, to be honest. Oh, There's always yeah. a bit of doom and gloom at Spurs. I don't know why that is. <laughs> yeah. but well, they can't they keep are. the lead <laughs> part of it or, or, yeah. or they go behind. <laughs> but their expectation's <laughs> huge, which is good. Yeah. And it's whether the players can stay consistent enough at Spurs to produce big results and they don't come any bigger than getting a result a result whether that's a draw or win is, is positive mm. for Spurs Although right now Erling Haaland got a hat trick uh, oh, did on he? international duty oh, so wow. well, there's he's, nothing he's back on that is there really he's, he's, he's <laughs> back, on, back on form again I wish he'd just got one and was saving it for Spurs <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, they he, can three, he can only score hat tricks he can only score hat tricks with his international team because Pep brings him off when he gets to yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> rests him <laughs> Yeah, well, having said all that, I wouldn't be surprised if Spurs do get something there because they've got yeah, they've yeah. got history of going up there and getting mm. a result. Feels yeah. like that's got goals in it that game. Yeah, plenty. Mm. Yeah, I think you're right. Seaman says with David Seaman, brought to you by Betway. Right, we've discussed all the games. Um, now it's all about you oh. <laughs> and this pressure. <laughs> no, there isn't. <laughs> so we've got a load of questions here, and the first on the list is. Uh, What's the biggest issue holding Man United back? Consistency. Yeah. Consistency in, uh, in in whatever tactical game they're trying to play. You know, what is there? I mean, a lot of people talk about the culture and the, 
the the structure and things like that. But it's really finding the consistency where they can perform on a regular basis and get results, mm. you know, and that's putting together the right ingredients on the football field to get that. And, and having the continuity of selection probably is, is, yeah. is helpful, you know, without injuries coming here, there and everywhere and, and getting people back to, to doing what they're good at, which is playing open, attack, attractive front yeah. foot football, you know, it, whatever that means front foot, but it's certainly going from one goal to the other, yeah. you know, and trying to score goals. Simple as that. Um, difficult question to ask, bearing in mind how much flux there's been. And you mentioned all the managers earlier on, but... Is there one of them that stood out since Sir Alex Ferguson took over as having got the best out of the players and been the most, you know, impressive <laughs> Manchester United manager, if you like? I think listening in the background a little bit, quite a lot of the players um, who were there probably over that period of time talk about Louis. Louis, strong personality, Louis, mm. really disciplined guy, but they actually enjoyed his He's on on training ground stuff, right? And and that and his staff, um, Jose for different reasons. You know, Jose is larger than life character, you know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and some of the players appreciated that. You know that he he took the heat sometimes for them, but I think Louis was probably the one that the the ones that I've spoken to anyway really, and you know the Ryan Giggses and people like that. They they enjoyed Louis being mm. around them, and uh, and what he gave to them. He gave them a little different dimension as far as you know the principles of the game if you want to call it that you know on the training ground so yeah I think he was quietly admired mm. Mm. talking the training ground what was it like with Jaden Sancho you know what was well, it, we, what was it myself and Oli were part of that we, yeah. know, we were part of that but, and, and, and people I'm, I'm not saying they forget but at that time Jaden Sancho was the best player in Europe yeah. in that position uh -huh. yeah. without a shadow of a doubt yeah and when the opportunity came to uh, to take him, it was, it's a no brainer. You know, he's available. He wants to come. And the reason the reason we took him was because we we needed a player in that to fit that that position. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't work out the way we wanted it to. And the only doubt in in everybody's mind was the fact that he hadn't played Premier League football. He left City young. Right. He'd gone abroad. He was a, a star straight away, more or less, in mm. Dortmund. And then he comes back and finds himself in the Premier League at one of the biggest clubs in the Premier League. What age, so was, what age would he have been then? Well, well it was 2021 20, because 21. it because he got named, he signed for United during the Euros, but announced yeah, just that's after right. the Euros. Right. That's right. And and to be honest, he, he settled in okay. He was there yeah. was no no issues at all with Jaden. Very quiet, different personality. Yeah. You know, we all talk about uh, was it now Generation Z are we on or Generation X? <laughs> I think there's another one after Gen Z to be it's, honest. It's, it's, well, whatever it was at the time, he, he fit that bill. He yeah. fit that persona. Yeah. And it was just a case of integrating him into a, the, the, I'm not saying Dortmund's a big club, but it's Man United we're talking yeah. about now and he's coming with all that, exp that, that, that expense, really. Mm. And I think he found it quite a turbulent time. We played him when, when we could. And you know he, his consistency wasn't there that we that we thought, and then all of a sudden you know, Ollie moves on, I move on. There's a, it's a bit turbulent in there, and he's again probably a victim of that circumstance mm. when somebody brings you in, no longer there, and then somebody else comes in doesn't really really yeah. appreciate what you've got. Maybe but was he made a bit of a scapegoat as well? There was there's so much made of the yeah. of, of the row and everything, and it felt as if all. Everything was trained on. I don't know. It just it did feel like as though the spotlight was yeah. on this one mm. incident or whatever you want to call yeah. it, you know, mm. which was probably perpetrated by both parties, I think, yeah. in a way. And it, it had a bit of a saga, didn't it, to it, which mm. is unfortunate because you've invested in a talented individual as a football club mm. and, a, and as a coaching staff. And, and all you want is that talent to show. Mm. Yeah. But then obviously... The game becomes political sometimes, doesn't yeah. it? Now, yeah. and, and and you become a victim of, of that politics and everything, the chaos around all that now mm. with media and, and and different opinions on this, different opinions on that, and it can affect people. Not only the, you know a manager, it can affect mm. a, a player as well. But it tarred him with a brush, didn't it? Yeah. You know, there were question marks when he went to Chelsea. But so then he, can, he, can he, he, back, he went back. He yeah, went back to Dortmund. He was yeah. brilliant again. Yeah. Brilliant again. Now he's come to Chelsea. We've seen. I saw him against Bournemouth, and he was brilliant when he came on for his yeah. debut. His, his, his talents, uh, yeah. you know, when he's when he's on it, his talent is there. You can you see can it. See I mean, he's yeah. he's he's what he's a he's a guy that can 
use the ball effectively when it's at his feet. Mm. He's got that. He's got that hazard. I'm not saying he's at the hazard level, but he's got that movability with the ball. Yeah. He's got the fluidity in his game. He just needs to bring out that personality sometimes yeah. to the game and be the guy. You know what I mean? And it's interesting what he said about it was his first season in the Premier League when he first came to Man United, and that can oh yeah, that can it, surprise it, a few players. That definitely, can, and know. I'm sure I'm sure he handled all that atmosphere at Dortmund because mm. that's a huge yeah. huge place to yeah. play. But there's there's something different in 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 Dortmund and Man United, yeah. you know, and especially when you've moved and you've you've got a fee on your head as big as that, mm. yeah. and and the expectation goes through the roof. Yeah. But, and and also traditionally, Man United love them types of players. Yeah. The fans love them, <clears throat> and you've got to do it. You know, take yeah. people on, beat people, create, score goals. Mm. You're a four. He is the four a forward yeah. in a forwards world, mm. and you've got to be consistent on that because that's. That's why you're there. And at Dortmund, yeah. you can go under the radar a little bit. You've got a little yeah. bit more anonymity. He never showed his responsibility at Dortmund. He, he did mm. do he did do everything right. that was expected of him yeah. at Dortmund. But, but what it's I, just what, recreating what, that. What somewhere I mean else. is, uh, uh, I hesitate to use the word circus, but that there does tend to be, particularly oh, yeah. with Manchester United, <laughs> a circus that comes around with it, isn't there? <laughs> and 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 it's hard when you're mm. you know painted to be. You know. Yeah, well, I mean, there's two sides to every story, I suppose, and and you you, you tend to hear one that's more favourable than the other, don't you? Mm. So you can create your own picture. But in his case, I I think he was unfortunate, really unfortunate, in that that early stage of trying to be the player everybody knew he was, but also then can he have the consistency to play? But also, you know, what is everybody thinking around him? Mm. You, you know what I mean? And and, you see, and, and that's you hard still to deal see. with. The players have got respect for him, you know, because like when he gets the ball, like defenders, oh, talent's they, don't, talent. they don't commit mm. because they know that he can embarrass them. Yeah, you know, talent's little, talent, and it doesn't trick. go away. It's just having that yeah. consistency and confidence to to bring it all out, and having the people around you. It's important that the staff around you really understand that mm. and and give him that safety zone to be able to produce mm. his stuff yeah. when he's on the ball, and and not be over critical internally. Wow. Not to be over because outside it's chaos, isn't it? Yeah, outside, yeah. It's just, well, you know. We're seeing that glimmer at, at, at Chelsea, and you know, we, we questioned whether Chelsea were going to get back challenging after yeah. what happened um, over the last couple of years with Roman Abramovich leaving the club and, and the turmoil that, that the ownership has caused. We've had the same scrutiny levelled at, at Manchester United, and I feel like Chelsea have got back challenging quicker than I maybe thought. Yeah. So, how quick can Manchester United get back to to, to challenge. That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Really? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, what it does show, basing it on Chelsea, is it's, it's doable. It's possible, yeah. isn't it? It can it can flip pretty quickly if all the if the jigsaw puzzle's there. You know, if it's fitting together, right. it can it can happen pretty rapidly. Uh, I still feel as though United need a lot more time. Yeah, they definitely need a lot more time. I don't think. On the playing side, on the field side, the selection of players, they're all they're all in. Mm. I think these, with a the new manager anyway, they're going to bring yeah, some exactly. more people yeah. in, aren't they? So it's still an ongoing process that it's hard to work out how far away it is. It's easy to sit here and say it's miles away, yeah. but it, 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 you know you can you can gain yards pretty quickly mm. in 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 the grand scheme of things, and a new manager and coaching staff can do that straight away. It's just a case of how far the others have gone in the meantime, mm. because yeah, that gap exactly. yeah. is getting big. You know, is getting big, isn't it? So yeah. all the others are catching up whilst you're trying to get there, mm. which is really a, a crazy thing to think about when yeah. it comes to Man United. Well, that that really? damages the brand as well. When you when you look internationally at the brand, you know Manchester United has always been the. You know, the well, they're still front and back page news, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> even now. Yeah. You know what I mean? But for the wrong reasons <laughs> much, at the minute. <laughs> much much yeah. to the amusement of a lot of other clubs and supporters, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. But that's that's just the nature of the beast, isn't yeah. it? And uh, the the best place to be is on the back pages because you're consistently winning. Mm. You know, and your players are playing well, and that's what everybody. Certainly, as a Man United fan, once is to is that consistency on oh, the back pages. I always just remember you know, in the paper again. I'd be like front or back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> vital, 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 vital question. Yeah. <laughs> They've got but, some good youngsters, though, haven't they? They've got yeah, they've they got have. Some, yeah. They've got uh, a good mix. Are there enough to build? A team around, or is he going to be dipping into the transfer market? In, ah, a new in manager January? will probably. I mean, it depends what his remit is when he's when he's taking oh, the job. If he's given to, any money to if spend, if he's got yeah. if he's got that money, but this time, 
I would say he's a manager being chosen by the incumbent Ineos group. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's more their guy now than probably Eric was. I don't know, you know, mm. but he, he got that feeling that this one mm. is the one that they're going to go with. Um, and all being well, they can support that, you know, mm. but they're, they're still under a bit of scrutiny yeah. as well as to sure. what their decisions are going forward. What was what was your, your thoughts on moving right back to when Arsenal were... This is why I said no fights. I know, no contending fights. with you. Like, what, what were, like, your thoughts and what was Sir Alex's thoughts on Arsenal? No, again, a lot of respect. Is yeah. it, 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 players respect players, do you know what I mean? They do respect them because they're talented and they know that it's going to be a tough, mm. tough moment. Peter Schmeichel and, said and in, that, didn't And in they? those yeah, days, exactly. you know, you knew that there were certain games in the calendar that were above any other games. You yeah. knew that. And you knew it for all different reasons. Quality against quality. Uh, attitude application coming, you know, head yeah. to head, crowd supporters. I mean, the build up to an Arsenal game is massive. I mean, yeah. it was all week. Yeah. That's when, you know, there weren't many midweek games as well. Yeah, Sometimes yeah, yeah. you could plan a little <laughs> bit better. But it created all this, this sort of quality. You know, there's a lot of quality and players were talking about it and ex players yeah. talk about it. And then the game happens and, and it was ferocious. It yeah. wasn't, you know, people talk about the beautiful game and all that, but sometimes it's banging heads together. You know, and it's winning the battle, isn't it? It was brilliant. It was brilliant. It's exactly. the brilliant as a neutral, by the and, way. And, and to be honest, in our heyday at Man United, that's, that's, you mm. talk to any player who played there, even in my time, even coaching, that was the attitude. Mm. Win the battle. Win your battle. Mm. And, and then the other bit will come through. And I'm sure it was the same with the likes it, of exactly. Vieira, Petit, yourself, yeah. all mm. them, Martin Keown, all these at Tony. You know, it was just full throttle and you knew. And I, I can guarantee, and you'll probably think the same, that that 90 plus minutes, it weren't 97 and 100 <laughs> minutes, it was probably around about 94. Yeah. Like but it was full-blooded, wasn't it? Yep. All the time. There was no, it was just give, take, give, take yeah. all Depending the time. whether you were behind or not. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be but 94, you, <laughs> 95, 96. Do you feel refs nowadays, like just thinking back now, the refs nowadays are too quick with the first yellows? Yeah, well, I think that's the rules now, isn't it? And that's oh. the way they, they've but been told to But for me, it spoils it a little bit. I think you, 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 you can't go through somebody now at the back and say, referee, that's my yeah. first challenge. Yeah. You know what I mean? I get away with that. There's one free. I, I want that one that free. Was, that was bold. <laughs> I'm sure well, that was either the one at the back. That was either the back of your head, wasn't it? Centre half and the centre forward. Or it was the tackle from Steve behind. Oh, sorry about that. going to be like this. Oh, my you God. Know? Steve Bold used to go with his size yeah. 14. Or the like, keeper would come out and just, you know, come for that cross and leave one on you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> There's like, yeah. That's not allowed in the game. No. You know, David? So it's got to be. A bit <laughs> but I get your point because yeah. I do think there are times when you know as a, an official that this is the game this yeah. is the spotlighted game and yeah. this has got to be refereed in a real a, a stern enough way to be in charge but also to be flexible enough to say hey come on this is a game this yeah. is what everybody's looking yeah. forward to and I think when you brandish cards early it does take a little edge it does, off it, you it know. Does for me and you well. cannot now in the Premier League, you cannot afford to lose a player in a football match. No. It just shows itself massively. <laughs> yes, it does. Does it not? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I just can't help myself. I can't help it. It's like a tick. <laughs> what, what did you both make of Arsene Wenger when he came into... Myself and Sir Alex? Yeah. Well, to be honest, I... Myself, I had no no issues at all with with most people. Do you know what I mean? I I, I just treated them as a as a so fit really. Um, the relationship we with Sir Alex and Arson, I think again was mutual respect. Mm. You know, I, I don't think either of them would admit that themselves. But you got this feeling that here's two two winners here, two mm. winners coming from a different angle, yeah. but really wanting their team to come out best. And and they were hard fought. The battles were hard fought verbally. You know, in the media yeah, the and everything like that, weren't they? Yeah. yeah. You know, and then, and the, but I think as time moved forward uh, towards both, probably back ends of both the managers' careers, there was definitely, you know, a, I would say a friendship. I mean, in inverted commas, whatever that looks red, like. But, red, white, but there was not. There was definitely. <laughs> there was definitely that moment when, yeah, they were they, they were they were talkative, yeah. really talkative together. Mm. You know, and and now they, you know, the LMA registered. Mm -hmm. top, top managers did, in the game and they, they seem to do what they have to did do. Did they have a glass of wine afterwards? Occasionally. Right. But um, 
Like United, Sir Alex, was no Sir Alex right always here. invited yeah. the staff yeah. and the managers in. Some, most of the managers came in. I think Arsene was was probably more lean, leaning towards upstairs after oh, right. the game. He'd go upstairs, yeah. but when we when we'd go to to Arsenal, his room was always available. Yeah, always available. And and I, um, if I remember rightly, on most occasions. You'd only be in there for probably 25, 30 minutes. Yeah, because you've, you've got the bus waiting. And so, then, as yeah. you know, as time moves on, back end of that 30 minutes, Arsenal would come in, say mm. hi to everybody, have a, a, a quick chat, and then that'd be it. We'd be off, sort mm. of thing. Yeah. But it, the doors were always open, they right. were never closed doors, not that <clears> I know of, anyway. Yeah. Well, uh, and the wine was decent, to be fair. Yeah. Apart, apart from when Man United wouldn't let us in the players' line, you have to beat them there. Oh, yeah, but yes, you had pizza. I knew you were going to break that. This was like, prior yeah. pizza game. <laughs> <laughs> when, we, when we won it in what was it oh one or oh two, like when we, we won yeah. one nil at Old Trafford, yeah. they won't let us in the players' lounge. The what players, you know? that is. So the players, yeah, they won't let oh, us in. Uh, that's a new one yeah. on me. Ah. So we, we took all the champagne <laughs> out onto the pitch and celebrated out there with our fans. Well, there you go. That's quite adaptability. That's thinking. On, that's thinking on yeah. your feet. Exactly. You'll be glad you didn't. Be glad you didn't see it. I would think. But what, what do you make of uh, Arsenal under Mikel Arteta and what he's done? Especially bearing in mind, you know, Arsenal did suffer. When yeah, Arsene Wenger left, the same he's as He's had his United. ups and downs. I mean, he's had the bit of turmoil, which everybody yeah. has to go through, don't they? Because mm. they have to earn that. They have to earn the Spurs, don't they? To Spurs. Yeah. You can't say that to an Arsenal manager. They, <laughs> they, they have to earn it they? when they go into a new club. And I think he, he's, he's took it on really well. Yeah. You know, he's gone through that phase of questionability and this mm. and the other. But then he's had some big calls to make mm. as well. Yeah. And he's, he's me, probably yeah. learned from a good one. Mm. in Pep yeah exactly so I'm sure they communicated through that phase as mm. well as to how to handle it but he's come out on, on the other side and he's, he's put together a team in his own vein hasn't he yeah. really yeah. which is good I think it that's was, good I to see I think what helped him a lot was that he won the, the FA Cup really early on mm. yeah in his at the start and that gave him quite a bit of credit because like you say when he had his, his little did, turmoil didn't give Eric Ten Hag any credit at all <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't, I can't think back to him as a player. It's a funny one, that, because he was in that sort of when I was coaching. Yeah. And, but I can certainly see in him the manager, the manager in him, because he is passionate. There's yeah. no doubt about that. And yeah. he, he does speak well, sometimes yeah. in riddles, but he speaks well. Yeah. But then again, he's, he's molded his team into what he sees as a, as a, as a winning a winning Premiership team. He's just got to get that one over the line, yeah. hasn't it? Yeah. Speaks and in riddles. That's so true. I know, yeah. so true. I've interviewed him. He did speak in riddles. <laughs> Jose used to do that as well. And you'd sit, by the time you're working out what it is he said, he's moved on to something else and you've, it's very clever. <laughs> it's completely he's probably learned from the best. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, always remember, I always remember Alan Shearer come back once on, on Eagle Duty and he was like, whenever they asked you a question, he's like, answer the question, but don't give them an answer. Yes. So I was like, what? <laughs> you know I do media training. Not That's exactly, exactly what I say. That, like, there's a way of answering but not answering. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Politician. Yeah. 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 You had some tough players to deal with, but what, what about Ronaldo's return? Because I tell you what, I, even I, as an Arsenal stroke Leeds fan, I was loving his return. To be honest, the whole place lit up. Yeah. You know, when that availability came about, you know, and, and, and there was a possibility... Then it was a it was a discussion that was had internally. Is it feasible? Is it do is it doable? You know, we're talking about top top money and and everything mm. there, and it happened. Yeah. It happened, and to be honest, there wasn't one person in that dressing room didn't get that one. They, yeah. You know, they all yeah. they're all looking at him going, "Wow, we signed a world class player. Here. This is world class in that dressing yeah. room." So that uplift, that surge, and that uplift was remarkable, absolutely yeah. remarkable. And he come in. He came in, I remember, because I had him the first, I was part of that first first sort of evolution of Ronaldo and he was the world's best in his head. Yeah. The world's best. And he proved that. But he was still top of the tree when he came to mm. United again the mm. second time. What he brought with him now is experience and standards, massive, yeah. massive standards. And, you know, I think he's gone on record himself and said he was a little bit surprised by what he, he walked into. But ultimately, he did his job. Mm. He actually did yeah. his job. He scored goals. Yeah. You it know? was good for the youngsters as well, I heard. Yeah, he did. He, he, he brought that with him because <laughs> if you if you throw it back to when he was a youngster, <laughs> he was the best. He wasn't invo- he wasn't interested in the youngsters. Yeah. Yeah. It was oh, about right. that going yeah. forward. Yeah. When he came back, now he's mature. Yeah, he had a lot to give. Mm. He had a lot to give. And he shared it really, really well. But in the dressing room, you know, I can only talk about what I saw every now and again because I wasn't sitting in there. Mm. But... Yeah, they they enjoyed 
having Cristiano Ronaldo at Man United, the fans, the fans, yeah. oh, they they loved it, absolutely yeah. loved it. I remember being on Soccer Aid when there was talk of him coming to Man United, right. Darren oh, oh, to, to Soccer Aid. Yeah, yeah, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> Played against Ronaldinho and Maradona, so he might as well join him at all. <laughs> but um, Darren Fletcher, was he was playing for the rest of the world. And he was so excited yeah. about Ronaldo coming to Man United, like yeah. almost like a little schoolboy. Yeah. Like, they were all like that. The, the, all the senior players at that time, you know, the Manu Matic and, and and that, they were so excited mm. that they actually got somebody in the dressing room yeah. with this capability, you know, what yeah. I mean, and this this personality. And he had bundles. Yeah. He still has. You know, he's mm. a terrific, terrific, terrific professional, unbelievable professional. Yeah. But you know, again, through struggle and strife he managed to get through it and then in the end it didn't pan out the way everybody yeah. probably expected but he had his what, own reasons for that why did it not what what was the dynamic between again and Ten Hag? again there's you've got ollie who's bringing him in mm-hmm. ollie knows him loves him you know he's, he's yeah. got a personality in the dressing room and he's doing the business he's, he's actually scoring the goals when it matters still doing that yeah. and then all of a sudden ollie's no longer there and it's like where does Cristiano go from here? Because now then the caretaker manager comes in. He's trying to put his sort of his ideology into the into the team and all that. And I, I'm not so sure Cristiano fit into that. You know, it, it happens with, with yeah, new managers. Yeah. And uh, but ultimately, he still performed and scored goals with Ralph with Ralph Ragnick. You know, but but eventually it didn't turn out the way the way it wanted. And and Cristiano was pretty. Pretty out there, wasn't he? Outspoken about yeah. the situation, and and you know what happens sometimes with that. You can go a little bit too far, and but especially with someone but with I, his power as well. He's yeah, yeah, he, had, he had a voice, yeah, but, exactly. but, but you, you you earn that sometimes, yeah. don't yeah. you? Yeah. Being who you are, and uh, I don't think he he stepped out of line too far. I don't think that was the case, but but he certainly wanted more. Mm. He wanted well, you, more. You, you when you first started talking about him, the first thing you said was. About standards, he's got oh, yeah, he's massive. got incredible standards, and if he sees that those standards aren't being, you know, either implemented or mm. adhered to by others, then I can see why he would then. Well, all the top players, they want backup, don't they? They want <laughs> they want the environment, they want the players around them to keep them where they are mm. and to push them even yeah, further, yeah. really, don't they? And if if you've got to find that yourself, sometimes it's difficult. It's difficult because. Cristiano, through everything in his career at Man United, he's a match winner. Mm. He was a match winner. And he was the yeah. second time around a match winner. You know, I'd seen him even when he, he scores an hat trick, you know, when he's probably not playing at the start of the week. At the end of the week, yeah. he's playing, he scores an hat trick. Mm. That's the judge of the man, yeah. you know what I mean? And 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 that inspires others to to do more. Mm. Uh, but he, he he was Cristiano Ronaldo at the but he's still playing now. I was going to say the back end of his career, he's still not there. He's still playing now. Yeah, he? So, didn't, he didn't so that shows, years, did he? No. That shows yeah, the yeah. standard he's, he's, he's set himself. Yeah. That's huge. But still huge. scoring. You know, scored yeah. for Portugal at the weekend. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. And they're in that dilemma now, aren't they? What, what do we do with Cristiano? But he's still turning out and he's still doing the business and nobody mm. else has stepped up to the plate mm. to take that off him. So credit to him. What, what makes a great assistant manager? <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Survival. <laughs> just, say, just say me. <laughs> I enjoyed, I mean, I, I was fortunate because I was a player, coach, assistant manager at, mm. at, at Man United over 20 years, 20 plus years. And I always thought the same thing. Why me? I never really got an answer to that, but why me? But when you're there, What, what you're do you mean there, by that? Just, well, you're at Manchester United, you're working with probably the most decorated guy yeah. who's chosen you to be his assistant yeah, yeah. you know and, and and you don't have time to think about it too much until you're not there you know do you have I mean? imposter syndrome in it um no not really no because i felt as though that's my, my job is to assist my job's to assist the players my job's to assist the manager my job's to assist the club it comes with the title do you know what i mean but yeah. but i sat in a in a nice position where i I had a I had authority, you know. The manager gave me that authority. And mm. you've, you've stepped from player where it's you. You step into coaching where it's you and the players, and then you step up into the management where you, you're dealing with a cl- football mm. club here. So your decision making is for the ma- with the manager and with the football club. Mm. So it's a completely yeah, different yeah. environment. But there's a nice little grey area you can sit in there sometimes, <laughs> you know, and 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 solve problems before they arise. And and I just thought the manager gave me a lot of. A lot of um, 
autonomy to do that. Mm. You know, he was he was very open in his. I'm the manager. You're yeah. the coach. When I was a coach, yeah. mm. fantastic advice. That you just coach, I'll manage. Yeah. Simple. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. But you've that. been there. You've been there. You played for Man United. Yeah, you know. So you've got a lot. You've got a lot well, of experience. What I found through coaching and then assistant was a lot of the experiences players go through as as they're starting their careers and or the the gaining momentum at Manchester mm. United. Usually, it's happened before. Mm. <laughs> you know, it certainly happened to me as a player. You know, I can remember situations I found myself in when I was public enemy number one as a player. So I know what that feels like. So when that happens again, it's filled up a little bit differently. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know? Yeah. But you can actually say, calm down. There's yeah. another game. There's another moment. Mm. Work a little bit harder. Maybe reflect on that. Don't take it too personally. And survive. Mm-hmm. Get through it. And I think yeah. it's important sometimes to have that I don't know, just a straightforward chat sometimes without all the all the nonsense yeah. that goes with it. Yeah. And I felt my position warranted that a little yeah. bit. And then there's a the moment with a manager where, you know, <laughs> there's, there's moments when he's off on one or he's got his heads all over the place or, or certainly he needs to make decisions because ultimately mm. that's his job. Yeah. And then you're sitting in there trying to, Work your way through that. You did, know? Did, did you ever like feel when it, I mean, Sir Alex was going off on one? Oh, yeah, I had no, a couple. No, did of you ever think like, no, Gaffer, you're wrong? Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you really said all the time then. Flying boots. The, the, beauty, the, the, the <laughs> beauty of Sir Alex was <laughs> his decision making was second to none. Yeah. yeah. Really well. And he, he, he would never admit to you know, getting a decision wrong because ultimately, a yeah, wrong decision, he could turn it into a positive one. Yeah. Right. And he, uh, he was really, really good at that. So I had, yeah, I had moments as an assistant when me and him would sit there and think, we're not seeing eye to eye on this one, you know, but ultimately I'm there to, to, to back him. Yeah. I agree to disagree. Yeah. Didn't happen a lot, I must admit, didn't yeah. happen a lot. But, you know, when somebody has a gut feeling, like, the, like mm. Sir Alex mm. has, it's hard to dislodge that gut feeling because yeah. yeah. usually that's the one you need to go with. You need to embrace that one. Yeah. And there were moments when I used to question one or two things, yeah. you know. But like that's good. Leaving right? your centre forward out and scored a hat trick yeah. the next game because you rested him and you're thinking, well, who's going to score three goals the next yeah. game? <laughs> so all those things. Yeah. But it was good. And, and not only was it just Sir Alex, David Gill was part of that yeah. as well. Mm. And he was terrific. He was right. for me personally, he, he allowed me to work in between mm. uh in between Sir Alex. And we had our moments where, you know, David mm. would talk to me about Sir Alex mm. now and again keep that pretty private can yeah. you just say this to me but, uh, <laughs> but, but it was, it was all, one of the beauties that I got out of Sir Alex was at one point he, he pushed me into the media side of it he yeah. gave me license to do the after match yeah. talks and he was really good he was because he, he refused to do it yeah and he put me up for it, you know. And then David on the back of that, Mr. Gill, <laughs> sort of said, right, you're up front and, you know. But at no point did he ever tell me what to say. Yeah. Oh, okay. No point, which was like, I half expected him to lead me into this, that. and the, But he actually went, no, you do the press conference. Yeah. You say yeah. what you've, you've seen or whatever. And I thought that was mm-hmm. pretty challenging. Yeah. But it was, uh, it was okay. And I did that for probably a year or so or more. Last, uh, yeah. last question for you. Funniest uh <laughs> Sir Alex Ferguson moment when you were working together. Oh, we're going to talk about the balloon thing here. And, and uh, Go on. I don't know this one. No. I've seen it. <laughs> um, you've got to look it up, right? YouTube right. it, right? Chelsea away. <laughs> and I've told this story to a lot of people, but I'm renowned for this. If we had a quid for every time this has been talked about, I won't be doing this. I've anyway, that's true. Are we missing a lot of Chelsea away. Uh, we come out into the into the, the stadium. Games just kicked off, but just before kickoff, to my left hand side of the dugout, I've seen this balloon bobbing around in the goal mouth. And you know when something gets bright into your head, it, I couldn't get rid of it in my head. The game kicks off; it's going all, all, and I don't know what it is, but there's suddenly there's an attraction to the balloon. The balloon starts coming nearer and near to me. It's all <laughs> you can see this light of the team, and it's coming and coming. I thought to myself, game's still going. I'm not watching the game at all. And I think, if that balloon comes near me, it's having it. (laughs) And it bobbles right in front of me. And I literally grab it there. I put it down and I I pop it. Well, Sir Alex is next to me. (laughs) And all the staff, and it just explodes. And Sir Alex goes off his head. (laughs) <laughs> oh, absolutely off his head and he's pointing the thing and he's having a rat snap at me. Oh, and I, I'm just laughing. I'm just la- oh, he jumped out of his skin. And I'm just laughing my head off. And I'm thinking, that's me done. <laughs> <laughs> There's no comeback. There's no comeback. You know? 
<laughs> and uh, and then as the game, well, obviously the game then carries on and what have you, but it was only the next, it was in the evening when they showed it on the TV. And if you watch it, you see the balloon, you see me grab it, pop it, but everybody in the dugout and around it is watching the game going up and down. There's only me watching this balloon <laughs> and popping it. And he, honestly, he lost the plot. I can't he believe I've not plot. seen that before. No. Oh, you have to look it up. Yeah. You have to look it up. Mm-hmm. But it was... Uh, I thought I definitely lost my job that next month. <laughs> <laughs> so I survived it. You know? yeah. Yeah. Well, it's been amazing having you on, mate. You're welcome. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for asking, mate. It was yeah. great. It's been brilliant. Great Absolutely brilliant. brilliant. Loved it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> Four to score. Your chance to win up to £50,000 every weekend. 18 plus at BeGambleAware.org. Terms and conditions apply. Now it's time to play Betway's Four to score. Every week, me and Fay are going head-to-head to try and predict the goal scorers in each of Betway's four selected matches. The rules are we get one point if they score and three points if they score first. We'll add up the points every week and keep score throughout the season. Last time out, I got three and Fay got one, meaning that the scores are now 24 to me and 28 to Fay. First up this weekend is Fulham against Wolves. Okay. What well, you thinking? You, you you went straight in, and I, I know I exactly who you're going to go for. Yeah, I'm going to go Smith Rowe. Uh huh. Yeah, Arsenal connection and all that. There's quite a few Arsenal players or ex Arsenal players at uh, Fulham. So yeah, I'm well. Just to go opposite, um, and you know, because I feel a bit sorry for Wolves this season. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that I know, sorry. sorry. They, they did all right. The they did. They did. Week. All right. I'm, cool. I'm going to go for Cunha. All right. Up next, we've got City Spurs. Yeah, what are you guys thinking? Okay, well, Erling Haaland, as I mentioned earlier, scored a hat-trick while on international duty. So I feel like he's got his mojo yeah. back. He scored in the last game as well before the international break. So I'm going yeah. Haaland. Well, I normally go for Son, but he's been letting me down recently. So I'm going to go for Solanke. Okay. If Spurs score. If, oh, oh. <laughs> I think there'll be quite a few goals in uh, in that game, which means it will be goalless, <laughs> no doubt. Ne- next up, Saints Liverpool. How many goals? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Get that to it everywhere they go. Sacked. Get that to it everywhere they go. Faye gets sacked. <laughs> What, what was it, your last score for the international break? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, but you don't yeah. Yeah. Five nil? Five yeah. nil? Yeah. Five, five, you, you, five, five nil. Oh, well, whatever. <laughs> you ain't got a new Aaron Ramsdale either, oh, so, no. yeah. That could be mm. tough. So I think we're both going for Liverpool players, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Is it like, not first, it's like, how many? No, sorry. Oh, oh sorry. wow. Can you imagine if you win this game? I know. Um, <laughs> oh. Can you imagine yeah. what it'll be like when we come into the court? Like, <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're not coming this uh-huh. week. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go Salah, okay. obviously. I'll, I'll go for Nunes, I think. Right. But I, I was I was on the fence with Gakpo, just putting that in there. Oh, in okay. Yeah, so you'd but like I'm, half a mark if he yeah, scores. Yeah. <laughs> half a mark? Yeah. Well, we tried to change the rules last week, didn't we? Yeah. Half a you mark. leave the rules to me, please. Yeah. <laughs> Ipswich United. Oof, where are we doing? Oh. I'm looking forward to this game. Just to see what Ruben's formations are like mm. and, and then mm. just to see how the players react to him. But, um, yeah, I'm going to go for Hoyland. There's something about him I like and he's not like, he's not... He's not sparkled yet, has he? Mm. Just little bits. No. I want him to like really more in him. Yeah, yeah, more in him. I'm going to go for Bruno Fernandez because he's on pens, yeah. but also he knows how to turn it on for yeah. a new manager. I think so. I'm going to go Bruno, and you know that's no offence to Liam Delap, your favourite uh, player, who obviously when you selected him for me it was very helpful. <laughs> But I, I'm also not my favourite. I, I he almost, turned down Saints, so not my well, favourite at all. I almost went for Sammy Schmodix, but. I think he picked up a bit of a knock in yeah. the England game and I'm not sure whether he's oh, going to be fit. Okay. So I'm just going to, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Sammy. Yeah. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Uh, I'm going to go for Bruno Fernandes. Cool. Those are our picks. Now you can make yours. Sign up to Betway and you can play the four to score free to play game with the chance to win in the weekly £50,000 jackpot. Just submit your selections before kickoff in the opening game of the round. Further T's and C's apply. Thanks for joining us on Seaman Says, brought to you by Betway. We'll be here next week to talk about all the Premier League action. If you haven't already, hit subscribe so you'll never miss an episode. See you all later. Seaman Says with David Seaman. Brought to you by Betway.